Secretary, please take the roll. Bellinger. Here. Bitters. Here. Foreign. Here. Daniel is excused. Donahue. Here. Drawn is excused. Heideman. Here. Herman. Absent. Jose. Here. Lassard. Absent. Lewandowski. Here. Rob. Absent. Schneider. Here. Seal. Here. Trester. Here. Wolf. Here. Okay. Right. Eleven present. We have a quorum. Thank you. Um, can you please join me with the uh, in pledge of allegiance? I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. <coughs> Okay, then I would. Uh, um, oh, I need approval for the minutes of the uh, meeting of June thirteenth. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all signify with, by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you. Uh, public forum and on agenda items only. Is there anybody here that wants to address the committee of the whole on the agenda items? Seeing none, we're going to go down to item 2-1, resolution 11-16-17 by Alderperson Bellinger, a resolution extending the special uh, charge for residential garbage fee for refuge disposal services provided by the city. Okay, um, I believe David wants to give us a little bit of a presentation. Or Maybe just to sure. kick things off, yeah. uh, recently the American Society for Civil Engineering uh, conducted a national study. Uh, it found that Wisconsin ranked 48th among the states in terms of road condition. That really is uh, the main thrust of our discussion tonight is unfortunately we, we fall into that category uh, as a community. Uh, as a background, as, as you know, most of you know, uh, in 2012, uh, the City Council approved a resolution creating uh, for the first time a $7.16 uh, garbage user fee. Um, uh, subsequently, uh, for the last three years, it was, it's been $5, so it was reduced from the $7.16 down to 5 <coughs> And at that time, it was asked that every two years the garbage user fee be reviewed. Um, at the current rate of $5 uh, per month, approximately $1.1 a million is received. Your spreadsheets probably reflect a higher amount of 1.2, but 1.1, 1.2. Again, the money uh, is captured and uh, accounted for in the general fund, and ultimately it frees up money uh, as it pays for uh, the cost of providing uh, garbage and recycling. Ultimately, then that frees up money to, tra to be tr transferred to the uh, capital projects fund and is, in essence, the largest source of funding for uh, street improvement program. In, in the 2016 budget, uh, not all of the money was found uh, in the general fund to be transferred into the capital projects fund. So uh, I think a little over $700,000, uh, Nancy Buss is in the audience, correct me if I'm wrong. So uh, at this present time, uh, the 2016 budget does not have 1.2 being transferred from the general fund to the capital projects. So as, so depending on your deliberation, uh, staff would need to find an additional half million of that 1.1, 1.2 to try and transfer to be uh, a major funding source for uh, the street improvement program that you'll be hearing tonight uh, from your director of public works. Okay, David. Thank you. I, what I'd like to do is go along with that and give you a quick presentation this evening on basically where we're headed and where we want to go with our <coughs> transportation. We've had uh, quite a bit of dis discussion over the years and I think you've all heard it as all the persons in our community that you know the state of our roads and our infrastructure and are in need of repair. And I'm going to present some of that this evening and talk about a plan moving forward and we're going to talk about the need as well as the funding of this program. And you'll be surprised, I think, and you'll see that we're talking about large types of systems. When we talk about the city as a whole of 200 miles of streets, 
that's quite a bit of infrastructure to maintain and, and keep in good working order. So with that, I'm gonna quickly get into the presentation and we're gonna get right into this chart. And you've seen this chart in previous pre presentations where on the left side here, we talk about the pavement condition. One being and zero being very poor and 10 being basically brand new. And over time, as the years go on, pavement will deteriorate with traffic and with age, weather conditions and so forth. If we're able to maintain our pavements early on during their very good years and good years with regular basic routine maintenance, be it <coughs> crack filling, slurry seals, joint repairs, we're able to extend that and keep that pavement at a high level at a relatively low cost. Unfortunately, what happens, however, if we're unable to do that timely repair, the rate of deterioration starts to fall off at a steeper rate. And when you get past, let's say, conditions of six, over time, it gets very steep and the rate of deterioration occurs very rapidly. And what happens is when you get to that point in your infrastructure, the cost of repair becomes much more expensive versus being uh, timely when we can do it. So let's um, <coughs> talk about that. Over the years, since 07, we've been, we've been raiding our pavements um, and, and longer than that. But I'm just, the data that I have in charts this evening will be from 07 through 15. And as you can see, as we go through 09, 11, not too much change, a little change in 13, and then in 15. And what you're seeing is a downward trend in our overall pavement ratings. And I think the next slide really, really hits home the impact of what's happening. We go to 07, and then we go to 15. That's quite a shift. 07 again to 15. Eight years, quite a bit of shift in our overall average in our pavement rating. So another way of looking at that is we just look at it graphically. In 07, we had roughly 50% of our streets rated good to excellent, and only 4.6% were really in that failed category. Three, about 4.6% ratings of three, two, and one. In, in, in 13, we went down in our overall good to excellent category, right around 42% in our failed has now jumped to 6.5. When we go to 15, it becomes really evident. We jump up to 14% of our network has now failed. We're in that steep part of that curve that we mentioned. So you look at that from 07 to 15, our failed has jumped from 4.62% to 14.08, about a 205% change over that time period. Fair has also increased. But are good and excellent, they have negative numbers. And in this case, negative is not a good thing. It's, it's a trend that's showing that our good and excellent pavements are, are not being made at a high level. They're actually failing and going into the, the fair and failed category. So again, I have this, this chart just to demonstrate where we are in this curve. And, and by far, the majority of our pavements are in this six to four area. And if we don't do something quickly, we're gonna lose even more of our infrastructure and it's gonna be even more costly as time progresses. The next slide is basically the costs of the different types of strategies that we can use as a department and as a city to, to work on our roads. What I'll do is I'll, I'll quickly show you some graphical pictures of crack filling, for instance. $5.50 a foot. Now, that's not $5.50 a foot to do the crack. It's actually right down the center line. We, we, we average the cost on a street when we do crack filling from length to length. So if you have 1,000 feet, you're looking at you know, $5,500 to do crack filling on that section of road, in other words. The next is asphalt road sealing started this project last year with, um, it's, it's where if you have a little bit too much cracking, you just basically resurface the road 
with, with a, a, a mastic seal of, of, road, of asphalt, and that's at $6.20. This can only really be applied to those streets that are already with an asphalt pavement. You don't put this type of seal over a concrete road. Another strategy is chip seal on existing asphalt. And you can see what chip seal is, is you put down kind of that, that oily asphaltic mix, and then you add aggregate chips. And then you add more and more oils and asphalt material on it, and then you allow the traffic, the road, as well as tires to, to beat this in and seal it in place. We haven't really done this process in the city. Uh, it's typically a, a, a rural type of process, but more and more, I'd say, urbanized communities throughout the state are going to this as an as a alternative to extend the life. <coughs> Everyone's kind of in the same predicament that the city of Sheboygan is, is that we're trying to preserve and maintain our infrastructure, yet at affordable cost for our residents. This is an alternative. One of the disadvantages of this is it's messy. The chips tend to be tr tracked. They track into driveways. They get into our storm sewer system. As I mentioned, it's more of a rural process with ditches and gravel shoulders where if the material does go off to the side, it's not that great of an impact. We're in an urban setting with curb and gutter, storm sewer. It, is, it tends to be a more of a, a, a messy, dirty type of, of product. We're doing this this year. We're removing and replacing curb and gutter in many of our streets prior to asphalt paving. That's at $40, $48 a foot. Concrete panel replacement. If we can go into some of our existing concrete streets and we can do spot repairs where some of our concrete panels need to be fixed instead of doing a complete resurfacing, that's at around $90 a square yard. One of the things that we've done over the years is we've, we've asphalted over new, con uh, put new asphalt over concrete street, existing concrete streets. What this picture is is with our city crew. This is our picture of our paver. It's a smaller type paver that we've used in intersections and some, some um, bicycle and recreation paths. It, it's, it's not really set up for long mainline paving. As you can see, um, the wings are attached, are ex extended far out to the sides. And when it gets extended out to the sides, the quality of the product is not nearly as good as with the next slide is a full contractor asphalt paving machine. It's much more wider. It's set up for doing highways and large, large paving projects. And the quality of the product is, is, would be higher as well. Nevertheless, what the, the city provides is an alternative to the hot in place that we tried. Especially one of the things with hot in place that we weren't able to do is <coughs> do something on our existing concrete streets and we have quite a few of our quite a few a large portion of our network is just concrete streets today as i mentioned concrete with a contractor is 5250 city crew it's about 30 dollars a foot what's the difference difference mainly is that we're able to purchase our asphalt from the county highway department which is at a lower cost what do you do with an existing asphalt street that's in poor condition? Well, you really have to remove that asphalt. And what this process does is these two types of machines are mills. They come in, they mill it off, they grind it off, and it's hauled away in dump trucks. Now, this material is recycled. It's not just landfill. Or, or, or it can be recycled. It's taken to the asphalt plant and remixed and made into brand new asphalt. If we did it with a contractor, it's about $75 a foot to mill and fill. If we do it with our city crews, again, $42 a foot because we're getting our asphalt from the, from the county highway department. And the last alternative is the most expensive is when the road's beyond any type of repair and we have to basically remove the entire road and start over and build a new road. And that's at $225 a foot. This might be a little difficult on the screen I think you have uh, the, the, the spreadsheet in front of you. But projects by rating and the types of different strategies that we would deploy. So for instance, we have quite a few streets one, one, rated one and two. And if we just did those streets that are eligible for the mill and fill with curb and gutter, that's $3.1 million. And we have about 2.9 or almost 3 million in just reconstruction. So the, just to take care of the, the streets right now, the rated one and two, we're looking at $6 million. Add in all the streets that are rated three, looking at $6 million of 
mill and fill with curb and gutter, 9.1 million of reconstruction, and 6.8 million of new asphalt over concrete for a total of 22 million, or just the streets that are rated three. Four, same, same, same thing across the scale. So you're looking all the streets rated four, grand total for all the different types of strategies that we would deploy to fix them, 16.1. Streets rated five, 11.8. Six, 1.9. So the grand total going to fix just the streets and maintain them. If you notice when we get to 10 and nine, it's not, it's not expensive. We're looking at 500,000, 600,000 for them. Again, the reason, because we're crack filling, we're doing some of those much cheaper alternatives. As you can see, when you get streets rated six, five, four, especially three and two and one, it's much more expensive to do those types of repairs. So just the streets, looking at the ratings and a different types of strategy, we're looking at 60 million. You look at, then you add the bridges that will need to be re maintained within the next several years, and there's about $1.5 million worth of work on bridges alone. We've included in this spreadsheet as well as what we've included is what we <coughs> had for capital improvements request for motor vehicle to upgrade our paving machine. Not necessarily to get a full sale, full size contractor version, but a version of, of a step up from the one we have that will be a little bit wider so we don't have to extend the wings so far. We'll have a better quality product and then that our crews will be able to, to go out using the asphalt from the county and be able to perform some of that work. When you total all of these types of projects, the streets, the bridges, and the equipment, we're looking at a grand total of $62 million over the, over the time frame to get our streets in our city back to where it needs to be. So what does that look like over time? We're proposing about a 14, 15 year cycle. Because that's the reason we went to 15 years, 14 years approximately, is because that's when we do a project, that's what we, our warranty period is for an asphalt street. So when we special assess the residents for the work that we're going to perform this summer, we started on 17th Street and 6th Street. When we do an asphalt mill and fill, we say that your special assessment is good for 15 years. If it fails before then, you get rebated and you get prorated that, that bare basically warranty and guarantee of that street. Basically what we're looking at spending, and this is really where we need to be, is right around $4 million annually to maintain our city street network. If you take our 200 miles real quickly, 200 miles of streets, and you spend $2 million a year, it's going to take you 100 years to touch every street. And streets don't last 100 years. If we do 4 million, we get 50 years. It's a stretch, but we do get pavements lasting 50 years, especially a brand new concrete street. We've had several streets that have lasted 60, even some 70, if they're brand new, especially <coughs> in residential neighborhoods. So the 4 million, I know it sounds as a large number on an annual <coughs> basis, but in reality, it's really where we need to be if we're going to get through the entire community within the next 50 years in order to maintain and keep our city, our city streets in a passable and a high quality level that I think our citizens have come to expect. So you look at the different funding sources on, on here. We have wheel tax that we currently have, and that's around 800000 a year. The garbage user fee on this spreadsheet, as City Administrator Hoffland explained, it's, it's 1.2, but it, it's more, probably more closer to 1.1. So yeah, if we took that 100,000 off over the next 14 years, it's another 1.4 million we'd have to make up. Special assessments are still included in, in, in this mix, and it's roughly around anywhere from, it starts out at 250,000 that we would receive to around half a million that we would receive in revenue for special assessing the projects as we, under our current special assessment rate. We've added the county sales tax at $400,000 roughly is, is what has been uh, reported so, thus far. That, we, that just lasts for the first seven years because after that they, they have an opportunity to review that as well as a county board. So we didn't want to put it out beyond 2023. And lastly, we, we have our borrowing. 
We started our borrowing in 2017 at 1 1.6 million through 2023. And then in 2024 through 2030, it goes up to 2 million, roughly making up that gap of the potential, the county sales tax not being available. Tax levy, this is the 2015. Basically, it just shows where our general fund tax levy 14.9, library fund is 2.3, the debt service fund almost 2.9, transit utility fund uh, half a million, and capital projects a little over a million. So the total tax levy is 21.7 million, or the rate per thousand of assessed value is 950, or on, based on a $100,000 value home, it's $950 annually for an average homeowner for the city tax levy. This next slide is the debt schedule from 2017 through 2030, showing the debt as well as the, the levy that we had in the previous slide of the 2.9 approximately other sources of funds. And you can see on the very far right where we're over or we're short funding. So you see several years like 19, 2020, 2021, 2022, through 2024, we're actually short funding with this, with this program. However, then in 2025, 26, and 27, 28, 29, and 30, we actually have more funds. So this is assumption again of 1.6 million of debt per year at 3% interest from 2017 through 2023. And again, 2 million of debt per year at 3% from 2023 through 2030. So that tax levy increase needed to cover the, that shortfall, as I mentioned in the right, far right column, basically is 22 cents per thousand. So back to that $62 million figure over the next 14, 15 years approximately, the funding sources. The wheel tax would generate $11.2 million over that time frame. Garbage user fee, if the council so decides to continue that at its current rate of $5, is right around 16.8 minus 1.4. If, if it's really 1.1 1, 1 .1 million, we're looking at then um, right around 15.4 instead of the 16.8. Special assessments over this time frame would generate 6.2 million. County sales tax for the seven years would be a revenue of 2.8 million. Then the borrowing figures of 1.6 for that time frame of 2017 through 23 is 11.2 million that we would gain in revenue, as well as the 2, point, the 2 million per year from 2024 to 2030 gives us 14 million. So the total borrowing between that is 25.2 equaling our total funding sources of 62 point, 62 and a quarter million dollars. Here's that debt service, the tax rate impact. If you recall, I think it was you know, 22 cents, it was 950. It would need to go to 972 if we borrowed the 1.6 per year to make up that, those shortfalls during those years. So here's the citizen impact of, of the program <coughs> in place. The cost, 2017 through 2030, sources. The $20 wheel tax, that's an existing fee. Garbage fee per, per resident, uh, per property owner is $60. The county sales tax, and this was part of the Sheboygan Press article we got off the web seat, website that was just recently approved, is <coughs> um, about $67 additional in in, in, in taxes for the for community resident, and then twenty two dollars annually for the borrowing. And lastly, special assessments as an individual property owner, as we it doesn't impact every individual property; it only impacts those where we're doing the the improvement. So basically, a total of one hundred and sixty nine annual cost to the to a citizen, a property owner. Questions. Thanks, Chairman. Uh, David, uh, I think I asked this at, at Public Works the other night, but uh, prevailing wage on these projects is going to going is going to be going away if it hasn't gone 
if, if, if it hasn't gone away already. Are there, any, are there any companies, paving companies, potentially that are not bidding now because of prevailing wage that may want to bid on some city prospects that would bring that somewhat closer to the cost of what the city does compared to the paver that you're using now, which is, the, you know, which is where you have to pay prevailing wage? Uh, not that I'm aware of, and, and there's a couple of factors uh, that are basically barriers for entry into the market for that type of operation. Um, for asphalt, for instance, there's only two companies really in the state of Wisconsin that provide basically the asphalt plants. In other words, they own the gravel pits. They own the, they own the, the, the plants that produce the asphalt. Uh, very expensive. So any, any type of company that would be a new entrant into this field would have to probably contract with the existing paving company for their material, their asphalt, their gravel, as well as the cap upfront capital to acquire the equipment. Um, we're fortunate that the only really reason that we're proposing of, of getting a paver ourselves is we're fortunate that our county highway department has their own asphalt plant as well as their own gravel pit. Um, that's unheard of, that's, that's pretty rare. And, th and it's, in that case, it's, it's very cost effective. Um, what you'll find is also is any, any new type of entrant or anybody trying to site a new gravel pit uh, would be very difficult in today's um, economy and, and, and environmental areas in terms of getting it zoned, getting it um, ready to go, in other words, getting it up to speed. So there's no, there's no smaller companies out there right now uh, that would be interested in bidding on our projects that are, that are non-union, and they wouldn't tackle something as big as what we would have or just for the reasons you mentioned before. Correct, and it's been our experience when we've, 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 we've bid out these projects for the last 20 years, we've had some very big years where we've had $2 million worth of work to some small years where we've had maybe seven hundred to five hundred thousand dollars work, thinking that maybe you would get a small smaller operator, and uh, they just can't compete with the large the large operator. And typically, the bids that we'll see, we'll get a couple of bids, but it's the same contractors, maybe give or take a couple of different utility contractors. If we have some storm sewer work or curb and gutter, that's where you'll see the difference. You'll get some. You'll get some competition in the concrete curb and gutter work or maybe the storm sewer sanitary sewer work, but typically it's either you're going to get the northeast asphalts or the, the, the large paving contractors, and either one will bid as the general. Um, so it, it's, it's a little frustrating, but, but it's, it's, we're not the only community that's facing that. Up and down this side of Wisconsin, um, you'll find communities our size the Manitowocs, the Appletons, the Oshkosh, Final X, we're all in the same predicament when it comes to contractors. Thank you. Alderman Wolf. Thank you, Chair. Um, Dave, could you go to the prior slide? That one or the one prior to this one? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Um, just correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, one and two would be years one and two, 17 and 18. Potentially, we, 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 we'd like to, ta the 17, 18, 19, we're really trying to, tra to tackle the threes, the twos, and the ones. We want to get those, it's, get those fixed. That's the biggest impact. But also we look at where, where, the, where the project is. Um, what, what's its greater, greater impact to the community? Is it, for instance, a collector or an arterial street that has a large amount of traffic that it's serving the community? If it's rated a four marginal or even a five, but we can we can tackle it and get at it sooner than rather than later, it's going to have a greater impact on a greater number of users. <coughs> so it's a balancing act where we'll try to do a blend of road repair projects every year. And the reason I was wondering is when you go to the next slide on 21, year 17, obviously you're looking at funding accumulated four million and so forth. I'm just wondering how much of, of slide 20 you're actually going to be able to achieve year by year. I mean, how long will it take us to get out of um, ratings one through four, let's say? How many years? Well, it, I, I don't know if we'll ever get to that point. It's kind of a perpetual program in terms of you're always going to have some streets 
that we're not going to be able to get to at four million dollars a year right. that are maybe six or sevens and if we don't get to them then next thing you know they're going to deteriorate and slide on that deterioration scale yes we're always going to try to get those that are worse and get them get our overall average up but the other factor in here is over time if you look at on the next slide that four million isn't really adjusted for inflation Correct. over that 14 year period it's pretty it's it's today's dollars so there, that, that will be a factor as well. well we'll probably definitely be doing less work in in 2030 that we're at that four million dollar mark than we're doing next year at 2017 Maybe just to mention, in addition to not indexing the cost or expenses, we also did not index the revenues. So we felt maybe they would balance itself okay. out uh, up to 15 years into the future, 14 years into the future. All right, thank you. Uh, Alderman Tresser. I guess it bothers me a little bit here. I'm looking at this chart, and you've already uh, spent the garbage fee for the next 15 years. Uh, that was supposed to be a temporary fee assessed for garbage pickup. And like every temporary fee that's ever been given to the people of Sheboygan, or the people anywhere, it's become a permanent part of the budget process. And I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's right that we should do this, and I, Personally, I think if you're going to use it for roads, call it a road fee. And then you've got wheel tax, garbage fee, special assessment, county tax, and borrowing all for the roads. It just boggles my mind that we're not being honest to the public. Thank you. Former Donahue. Um, if I could just provide a, a little background uh, with respect to how we came to the name garbage user fee. Um, some of you sat in the chambers, either, either as alders or out in the audience, when the fee was established. Um, the city, like all municipalities, is under tremendous budget strains because of um, uh, revenue restraints that are imposed on us uh, at the state level, uh, starting with Governor Doyle and certainly continuing through with Governor Walker. We are also sharply restricted in terms of the kind of fees that we can impose, like almost no fees can be imposed that don't require us to make a dollar for dollar subtraction from the actual tax levy. So we have, since 2005, essentially uh, maintained at the same tax levy rate. In other words, if you were to consider your family budget, if you were bringing in $30,000 a year in 20, in um, 2005, you'd be bringing in $30,000 a year in 2017, 16 or 17, irrespective of increasing costs and so forth. When the council was struggling back then with this fairly significant budget deficit, there was talk about, well, what we can do is separately assess something as a garbage user fee that we won't be punished for. It, it's a fee. We won't be punished for it by the state in terms of reducing our tax levy. And it is one small way that we can increase at a very minimal rate um, what we are charging our taxpayers. So although there was a lot of debate at the time, the way that I have interpreted this is that the garbage user fee was not instituted particularly to cover the cost of garbage. We came at that amount by trying to figure out what garbage fees to the, to the city cost, um, but that it was a way that we could balance our budget. And, um, and it is to the point uh, since, uh, I think, 2013, 2012 or 2013, that it's $5 per residence um, uh, in the city. We really weren't being dishonest, frankly, in any way, shape, or form. We might have been a little confusing, but we were certainly not being dishonest. And it wasn't meant to be a temporary fee in the sense that come 2014, the fee is gone, that's the end of it. 
we really did subject ourselves to this continuing scrutiny, which is one of the reasons that we're here tonight, the continuing scrutiny of do we really need this money, is it fair, is there a better way of doing it, um, you know, how, how, can, how can we figure this out. So overall, the $1.2 million goes into our general revenue, our general purpose funding. And you can consider it going to DPW to handle the garbage fee or garbage collection costs, but that then frees up the money for, for road construction, road repair costs. So it's not dishonest. It might be a little confusing. It is under extreme financial restraints about the only way that we can do business. And so for that reason, um, it's, it's hard to believe, but our citizens really, that tax levy rate has maintained pretty even for the past 12 years in the face of minor inflation, but nonetheless inflation and so forth. So I think what we're talking about tonight is if we, <clears throat> if we do get rid of the garbage use, user fee or we, we reduce it, whether it's for garbage or whether it's road repairs, that money won't be there. And so what we'll need to look at then, and I, I appreciate um, Dave Beeble's uh, slide presentation because it, it really brought home to me how dramatically in just seven years our road conditions have deteriorated. Now, I have constituents who talk to me about how bad the deterioration is, I'm sure all of us have, but Dave actually put it in black and white or the nice colors that he used just how bad that those road repairs, the condition of our roads, how, how dramatically that has decreased. So if we're not going to have the garbage user fee, and yet we want to continue our service to the community, we, I, the only way I see around this is to increase our borrowing. And, um, you know, we have the room to do that. Um, uh, we can certainly do that. Um, Citizens will pay for that as well, so we need to, you know, we need to, to be careful of it. But in terms of, if you think of managing the city um, it, as almost ma managing a household, you can't do more when the money stays the same or the money is taken away. And that's really what, you know, what we're looking at here. So excuse my long-winded response, but I, it, just from a historical perspective, whether we call it a garbage fee or a user fee, or a way to fund our road repairs, this was a way that we could actually raise some money to, to bring to the road repair situation that really, frankly, has gotten critical. As Dave's slide shows, $2 today, $6 if we, pay, if we postpone it. We're in the pickle we're in now because we just kept postponing it. You know, it's the old kick the can down the road. Well, now we can't even kick the can down the road because the road is in such bad shape. So we really do need, as, in my opinion, as, as legislators, as kind of the heads of household, we really need to take care of this now. And um, so uh, just by way of background and also my argument as to why I think the garbage fee really does need to stay in place. Thank you. Are there any more questions for David? Look at Scott. I have a couple. First of all, one thing that I hear from a lot of people that ask about all these fees that they're always charged is where does the city get money to give to all these developers? Why can't that money be used instead of giving it to developers for everything? And then the other question I would have for Dave is <coughs> the streets that you're talking about is that based on the number of miles of streets staying the same, or is that taking into account streets that may be annexed into the city in future years or future streets in new subdivisions? Are those included in there also? This, this would only be our existing network. It does not take into consideration future additions. Uh, typically, when you do a future, uh, let's say a brand new road in a new subdivision or let's say an industrial park in a new area, for instance, that, that total cost is specially assessed because it's brand new. However, um, if there's annexed roads that would come in and, and, and so forth, no, that is not included in this. Okay. Alderman Ballinger. 
Thank you, Chairman. Um, David, I've just got a question for you. You mentioned that you wanted to upgrade the paver and you weren't gonna get a commercial grade one, but you were just gonna get a step up. I'm wondering why you wouldn't get, it's, if we're gonna get into this business of you know, doing more of our own paving, why don't we get a significantly better paver instead of just a step up? It, it is, a, I mean, probably what I was trying to say is it's, it, it is a commercial grade, but it's not what you would typically see for like highway type of work. Um, we don't need one that large, but it is, substantial and commercial enough that it would be comparable of what would be used on city streets by a contractor okay so they they have different the the one that was in the slide earlier that was probably a highway paver uh, it probably has a screed 14 feet to 18 to 20 feet in in width and then they can do large passes of asphalt in one pass ours would probably be about a 14 foot max so we can do one lane at a time, for instance, and then as well as we can narrow it down to do the parking lanes. But it would be a high quality type of paver and screed. Um, actually, the city of Appleton has this type of paver and we're, we've kind of based the specification of that paver off of what Appleton is using. Thank you. Okay. Alderman uh, Bourne. Thanks, Chairman. <clears throat> One thing that gets a little frustrating after you've been, been on the council for 11 years, I'm in, starting my 11th year now, is that you have a history of a lot of stuff that's gone on since I've been on the council. I've been through the start of the municipal court. I've been through the start of the uh, ambulance service. And when this, when this garbage fee was sold uh, to the council back when it started, it was, it was sold on the basis that over the course of the first couple of years that there might be an ability to wean us off of the garbage fee. Well, uh, I'm frustrated to say that I haven't seen any weaning. Uh, and, and as a matter of fact, uh, Alder Person Trester, had it not been for my motion uh, when this thing was formed, this thing would have went on forever. I was the one that made the motion to have it sunset so that we could take a look at it. And that's why we're here tonight. Otherwise, this thing would have went on forever. And I've got the same problems with it that you do, along with all the other fees. So, it, you know, it gets kind of very frustrating with all of these things that you hear historically, that sometimes they don't come to fruition. And that's what really irritates me about this garbage fee is because I remember definitely that it was being sold as temporary and that through belt tightening and everything else, we were going to be able to wean our way off of it. And here we are. It's sunsetting, and now we're talking about renewing it for who knows how long, maybe forever. Thank you. If there's no more questions of David, then I'll have, you're, you're done. So, I, I guess, to me, what's at issue is here is whether or not we continue a fee. Um, just think for a second if our roads were great, and they're all re repaired. That wasn't the issue. I would have to think that there would be people on, on this council and this city that would want to find that money to be spent somewhere else. <coughs> it would not go away. And I have to agree with Alderman Bourne that when this initially came out, though it was disguised as a garbage fee, it was a fee to, to cap a hole in a budget. That's what it was. And now what we're doing is we're attaching a problem to a funding mechanism that if you don't vote for the fee, that means you're, you, you don't want road repair. Well, that's not true. I want road repair. I'm just not too crazy about establishing a fee that will go on forever and ever and ever and ever when the initial reasoning behind it and what we were told was it was going to be going away. Um, that's why I, you know, we need to find other, me uh, other funding mechanisms if this, if this is all possible to get the roads. But again, I think what's happening here is we're attaching a problem to a financial uh, uh, a fee that, quite honestly, though it would solve, it would bring $1.2 million in. But again, uh, I think it's another way of getting, getting money from the citizens that, I, I, quite honestly, I don't think they all appreciate. Alderman Belger. 
Thank you, Chairman. Um, I originally drafted this resolution, or you know, to bring it forward. I, I should say it's not my original resolution. I was not part of the garbage fee when it was created, but um, I brought it forward because obviously it was going to sunset, and for budgetary purposes, we needed to address the, um, you know, the viability. Are we going to have this these funds as part of our budget, or, or are we not? So, um, I brought it forward. Um, I was hoping that this would have been. Um, dealt with sooner, uh, but it hasn't. And in hindsight, um, it's, I'm kind of glad now that, that it hasn't been dealt with sooner in lieu of what the county just did to us with the uh, sales tax, and um, which I just think is um, extremely egregious when 43% of the population of the county is going to be contributing to the $10 million that's coming in, you know, for this for this uh, sales tax, and we're only getting four hundred and eleven thousand dollars. I think it's just you know outrageous, and um, the rest of the county is all benefiting you know based on the taxpayers that live within the city. And I, it's almost unconscionable to me that that's the way it was done. And I'm obviously still very upset about it, but it, it is what it is, and, and we have to move on. Um, the, We've got, recently we enacted a wheel tax and I supported that because the wheel tax was a fee that people that owned cars that lived in the city um, were going to have to participate in the uh, very specific need and use of that money for road improvement. And um, the garbage fee, um, I voted to reduce it. Um, I think Alderman Bourne was, was one of the people that suggested instead of the the seven dollars and sixteen cent, or whatever it was, that we reduce it to five, and, and I supported that reducing it at that time. But now, on top of that, we've got a you know we've got a county sales tax, and we're looking at borrowing more money, and to borrow more money costs to pay it back. So we would be looking at increasing taxes to pay that back too. So it just seems like we're hitting our residents over the head with this tax or fee hammer, and you know I don't know how much more they can take. They've got, you know, everybody's benefiting from the amenities and, and the um, attractions that the city has and comes in here that don't, that don't live in the city and use our infrastructure and don't have to pay for it. And it, it needs to be maintained. I get it that there's some parts of the infrastructure that's at a critical stage, but I still cannot, you know, put all this burden. And, and I didn't mention the a special assessment, too. Um, it's always fun to live in a district that is getting, uh, having a special assessment, especially the size of Eisner Avenue that was done a few years ago. Um, you know, that was a lot of fun dealing with those phone calls. So um, what I would recommend is I would like to have an amendment to the existing resolution, and instead of extending the garbage fee, I would recommend cutting it in half from $5 to $2.50 to, uh, $2 and putting the sunset for five years um, on that, and, and what that would do is it would force us again in five years to look at this all over again and see where we stand as a, um, as a city and if we do need that revenue or, or what we need to do with it. Um, what that also would do is you would take the $1.1 million, which this is generating, and it would reduce that to $550,000. And in addition to the $411,000 that the county is so generously giving us, uh, that would equate to 961000 So it's almost, you know, the same as the gar keeping the garbage fee. We reduce it by half, and, and we still have um, a significant source of revenue, and we're still able to do some infrastructure maintenance. So I would propose that. Thank you. I'll second Thank you. that. Okay. Uh, let me see. Alderman Jose. Okay. Um, I'm going to speak in support of what Alderman Belger just suggested, but uh, first of all, I want to point out that there isn't even a motion on the floor for this. Um, yeah. okay. okay, I'll entertain a motion. I mean, you. I mean, you started. You start. We start. Dave talking, and there, the, the, uh, you, you said you you mentioned the agenda item two two point one, but nobody ever brought forth a motion or seconded it. That's what I'm pointing out. Okay. Then I'll entertain it. Are you going to make a motion? No. If it was left as it is, I would vote against it. But I'm I'm considering voting with an amendment. I'm considering voting for it. John. Did well, you I, I I amended the. Okay. You know, so do I need to 
I guess we I have. I mean, I, I've got a, there's a motion on the floor to amend. John, I'm saying there's, there's at the opening of the meeting, there's no original okay. motion. Yeah. It would probably be cleaner if you introduced your original resolution, which was on the agenda, and then um, if that's seconded, and then you can just move to amend. Okay. I think that's what Attorney Adams would say if he's here. Yeah. If he were here. That's, that's your legal opinion? Mm -mm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I, um, I would introduce resolution number 11-16-17 uh, by myself to extend the special uh, charge for a residential garbage fee and refuse disposal services provided by the city. Is there a second? Okay. Okay. Now I would like to attach my amendment that I just previously stated to that. So I would amend this original. Second. Okay. And there's a second. Okay. Under discussion. Does anybody have any questions about um, what we're going to be voting on as far as uh, the resolution? Alderman Bourne. Thanks. Uh, I like I like everything that Alderman Bellinger said. I think five years might be a little too long. I would be more comfortable with three. Uh, so I, I would offer that as a friendly amendment. Um, I would prefer to keep it at five. Okay, do I have a second on uh, Alderman Bourne's motion? I'll second the three years. Okay, thank you. Under discussion. Okay, so then the... The only thing that we can discuss now is the amendment. Yeah, to the, yeah the amendment to the, the time frame. This is the only thing that we can... That can Discuss at this that moment. That has to be voted on first. Yeah. So we have to vote on the time frame. We so vote. there's been a motion and a second. Right. Um, we're going to take a vote as to uh, for the amendment from five years to three years. Okay. Mary. Right. <coughs> Bellinger. No. Ritter. No. Warren. Aye. Donahue. No. Heidemann. Aye. Jose. Aye. Aye. Schneider. Aye. Steele. Aye. Lester. Aye. Wolf. Nay. Seven ayes and four nays. Okay, motion passes, so we're, we're looking at the resolution with three years and at $2.50. And again, just so that I'm clear with my <coughs> attorney sitting here, this is only a recommendation of the Common Council. This is going to come in. Right, okay. So we're not establishing any, so this will be at the next council meeting. So, all right, we have a motion of three years and $2.50. Alderman Thiel. Now we can discuss the actual right. garbage fee. Yep. <laughs> Perfect, thank you. Um, I think what happened tonight is the focus was mainly on streets, and I think that's what we looked at strictly here for this garbage fee instead <coughs> of the other services that I think our um, citizens deserve also. Um, I still have a concern that we cut three firefighters without being voted on by this or by the council and we haven't replaced those. And so, and I also feel we need a few more uh, police depart uh, police officers also. If I know that this type of fee is going to those services, it has my 100% support. I'm all about roads, don't get me wrong, I propose the wheel tax, I'm about fixing our roads, but we have other services that I feel need to be taken care of too. And I believe we need those three firefighters that we never voted to get rid of. And we need some more police officers. And if those are included in this type of budget, I'm in favor of it. Otherwise, no. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Alderman Belger. Um, I'll defer to you know, the uh, city administrator on, on this to address this, but wouldn't, wouldn't uh, Alderman Steele's concerns be better directed at you know, with the you know public protection and safety budget, and you know instead of the capital or 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 this, what we're looking at right now. I mean, shouldn't shouldn't that shouldn't that be where that concern lies and how, where it's addressed and and not. I mean, this this obviously is not intended to fund additional protection services, whether it be police or fire. Uh, correct. the The issue of funding of uh, operational budget matters including staffing whether it be police or fire uh, you know will be addressed as part of the you know 2017 proposed budget 
Uh, it will be discussed at length uh, at Public Protection uh, and Safety Committee as well as all the other respective committee commissions and boards uh, in, the, in the latter half of August. So approximately a month from now, we'll be in the middle of those discussions. And I don't want to diminish your concerns, Alderman Thiel, you know, because they're obviously legitimate, but I, you know, I just don't think that this is, this document, or this resolution that we're looking at is meant to cover those concerns. Okay. Yeah. Alderman Thiel first, and then but, Alderman Donahue. But the, um, the garbage fee, that goes into our general fund, correct? Yes. Correct. So that's why I'm bringing it up, because it does go into our general fund, so ultimately it can be used for those items. So whether we voted on... $2.50 or $5, I would be in favor of $5 if I know that this is going for other services also, not just for roads. That's why I'm bringing it up here. Just as a follow-up, uh, at the beginning of the meeting, I mentioned that uh, of the 1.2 that's identified on the spreadsheets uh, that is labeled as garbage fee, uh, again, our, our accounting system uh, <clears throat> provides for that money coming in through the general fund <clears throat> excuse me, and then ultimately transferred, uh, the expectation on the spreadsheet is that it's transferred to this capital projects fund to fund streets. Uh, I also mentioned that the 2016 budget only transfers 700,000. So in order to accomplish what's on the spreadsheet, uh, staff would need to come up with an additional half a million, uh, which is gonna be a challenge. In light of the uh, motion that's on the floor of cutting this in half uh, to 550,000 uh, so that really what that means is 150,000 of the current uh, fee could be allocated toward covering uh, personnel related costs whether it's firefighters or police officers so uh, if you so again based upon your concern about keeping the $5 intact. Uh, that would be a funding mechanism <coughs> to potentially uh, put those positions, whether it be putting those three firefighter positions back in, possibly other police officers, that would be the mechanism to, to fund that. Cutting it to 550 basically puts us back where we currently are with no funding available to assist the general fund in funding public safety positions. You mean 250, right? 250. Reducing it to 250. 550 from 700,000. So that's a 150 difference. So we have 700,000 currently going from the general fund to the street projects. Okay. And by cutting it, uh, you mentioned, a, a, I thought you said a, fi a 550,000, <coughs> because we're really looking at 1.1 million, not 1.2. Right. So $550,000 cut in ultimate revenue. But we're picking up 411,000 that we didn't have. But that's dedicated for transportation related. Right. Mm -hmm. Go on, Alderman Donahue. Um, from my perspective, the easiest way to look at this in terms of um, where the money is is if we think about the city budget as a pie. And if we get rid of the guard, so taxes are the blueberries that go into the pie. If we take out 1.1 or 1.2 million dollars or 550 thousand dollars, the pie just gets smaller. <clears throat> and so, what we're doing as alders is deciding where the lines are drawn in terms of who gets what. But now it's a smaller pie. Our citizens will save five dollars a month or two dollars and fifty cents a month, but the pie will be smaller. So we'll have to figure out, can we get along without the additional three firefighters? Can we just stretch out the, um, can we just stretch out the road repairs, knowing that it'll be more expensive as time goes on? So if we just think of this as the revenue that comes in is our pie, and we, and we get to figure out how, how we slice it. So, I mean, the decision is up to us. I mean, if we take $1.1 million away, we can decide that that'll be less money we spend on roads or on fire or on the parks or whatever it is that we want to do. Okay. Alderman Jose, first. Um, I, uh, I'm, begr I'm begrudgingly going to vote for um, 
as if if the amendment passes to reduce the 2.5 percent, I was actually going to, if it was just left without an amendment, suggest we do without the garbage fee for a year, since we have 700,000 in the budget, <coughs> and we're picking up 400,000 in this new uh, county sales tax. 700,000 plus 400,000 seems to me to be 1.1 million, which is what we've been really collecting for for the past couple couple of years, and uh, but then. We come to have this presentation, and the ink isn't even dry on the county sales tax that's been put on our backs, and the money's been allocated in another uh, another direction. So I was going to say, let's just kill the garbage tax altogether for a year, taking the four hundred thousand and the seven hundred thousand, and creating one point one million out of that. But begrudgingly, since Alden Belger is proposed this amendment to push it for three years and reduce it to two point five percent. I would vote in favor of it at, at that level, 2.5 percent. Not part of me, two dollars and fifty cents. Two dollars and fifty. Alderman Warren, then Alderman Treasurer. Uh, Daryl, I'm confused about what you just said about uh, seven hundred thousand dollars has gone into the general fund from the garbage fee, and it's supposed to be 1.1 million. Is that, is that because we're, where we add in the year, and the rest of it is going to follow, or can you explain that? Yeah, it's 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 confusing. The the 1.1 that the city is currently receiving uh, through the garbage fee, only $700,000 is being transferred from the general fund into the street improvement program. So the city's general fund is spending half a million of the existing user fee for non-street purposes. So if this is cut to 550, then that means two possible outcomes. One is that you continue to transfer money, which would, not, which would be, in essence, 550000 to the street improvement program. But that means that you have a 550, I think $550,000 hole now in the general fund that you have to come up with, the, with money. So in light of the uh, levy limits that the state has imposed upon us, then you're, you know, you're probably looking at cutting staff if, if you want to continue to have some sort of street improvement program, the, the other option is to, you know, is to borrow your way uh, in order to have a street improvement program. Is there a specific place where the, where, is there a specific place where money that was intended for the garbage fee in the general fund is going? You said it's plugging about $500,000 right now. Where, where do you, can you give us, a, is that going to the public works department? Is it going to the fire department, police department? Where is, where is it, or is it just a general balancing? It's a general balancing. It's not slated or isolated anywhere. When the 2016 budget was put together, it was, it was just money put in to, to fill a hole. Okay. Thank Alderman you. So basically what you're saying is that there's no guarantees whether we have the $5 a month garbage fee or not that we're going to have money for the fire department or the police department because that money could be allocated for something else, like buying the Boston store and tearing it down and all that money that we put into it that we lost. Um, I think we need to be better stewards of the money that comes into the city, and I really and truly think we're bombarding the people of this city and we're not providing the services that they need. And the fire department and the police department are services that we need along with the roads. And we're not going in that direction. Right now we're talking about the garbage fee and the, <coughs> the wheel tax and the special assessments and the county sales tax and the borrowing and the burden it's doing, or the burden it is to the people of Sheboygan. We are, building apartments downtown. We bought the Boston store, we tore it down, we're building the apartments on 8th Street. All this is supposed to be generating tax money, then use that tax money to help surface the roads and give the people in Sheboygan a break. Thank you. Alderman Velger, did you have something? Yes, um, it, it was my understanding um, Daryl, correct me if I'm wrong, um, uh, from your predecessor and, and from uh, Alderman Hammond that uh, 
Well, in fact, what you said was true that 500,000 was being used you know, for other purposes. Uh, in future years after 16, or, or after 17, I should probably say, um, that w w we wouldn't need to keep doing that because we would have net new construction coming on board and there would be taxes from acuity and from other things that you know, would generate you know, the additional revenue and therefore you know, that, that while it may be a blip this, this year or the, on 17, you know, moving forward, that's not an issue in that it was always the intention if we were to keep the garbage fee that at that point in time then in 18 and moving forward, you would roll 100% of that revenue into streets or road repair. That was, that's what was told to me, you know, from, you know, your predecessor and, and uh, Alderman Hammond before, and obviously I'm not holding you to that, that's, that's what they said, but I just want to know if, if that's a an accurate statement or not. You know, it, it really comes down to the Common Council and what your priorities are, whether you dedicate 100% of any new taxes that are received as a result of new construction in the community or whether those those extra dollars go toward personnel costs to bring back the additional firefighter the three firefighters or or potential uh, police officers uh, of course you have uh, a large existing staff um, and uh, their benefits uh, and their wages you know will be costing more uh, every year so that's another potential location for for the new taxes uh, that are received as a result of new construction in the community. Uh, going back to a point earlier about uh, other activity going on in the community, uh, downtown redevelopment, Boston store, the city has pr approximately 20 different funds, accounting funds, and legally there are restrictions as far as uh, how we spend that money and when we receive taxes as a result of incentivizing developers what that money can be used for. And oftentimes we have a 20, up to a 26 year uh, fix as far as that money has to be dedicated for expenses or related debt to incentivize uh, the developer and cannot be used for purposes such as hiring police officers, firefighters, uh, or fixing streets uh, outside the downtown at, as an example. So unfortunately uh, we're often hand, handcuffed in, in how we operate uh, based upon state laws or even internal policies that you've established. Thank you. Alderman Dresser. You talked about a piece of the pie and I'm wondering what portion of the household budget pie you would like the people to give up for the roads, for road repair. Some of the families in, in my area, in my district, are stretched to the limit, and the only part of their budget that they are going to give more money to the city from is going to be their food budget. I personally am not going to be responsible for families that are going to have to spend food money to pay these extra taxes for the roads. I think the roads need to be done, and I think we need to, to be creative in how we do it without taxing our people more than they already are taxed. Thank you. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, just to expand on what Alderman Trester said, as far as our constituents really living from paycheck to paycheck, if you take, uh, you know, with inflation over the last eight or nine years, most people have lost thousands of dollars in income. And I, and, and I just, you know, I agree with her. I don't know where, what, where our constituents, and I think this $67 a year that the county came up with, that on average people are gonna spend on this new half percent sales tax, I think it's way, way, uh, un, uh, way, way under what people are gonna be spending, especially if they somehow can afford <coughs> to go out and buy some bigger ticket items at a half per, an additional half percent sales tax. They're dreaming if, that, if they think that that's only gonna cost the average citizen $67. So again, I, I, I agree with Alderman Trester, I, with what's happened over the last seven or eight years, even 10 years, uh, when we go back to the to the recession, people's real money that they have to spend has actually gone down by thousands of dollars, and yet, four hundred and fifty to five hundred thousand dollars a year in additional salary and benefits. And I I certainly understand that you have to pay good wages and benefits to maintain your employees, but our constituents are hurting. A lot of them are hurting. 
Thank you. Alderman Lewandowski. I just want to say that we have to remember that the people of Sheboygan are not a bottomless pit of money. And I've lived in the city my entire life. I have never seen any property in the city that's got a money tree growing in the backyard. And I know for myself, my social security disability, I'm actually getting $100 less now than I did last year because I have to pay for my own Medicare, which was deducted before and the state was paying for it. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? Okay, uh, seeing there are none, there's a motion before us uh, to amend the resolution to drop the price of the, uh, from the fee to $2.50 in three years. Uh, would you play, uh, take a vote on that, please? Bellinger? Aye. Ketter? Aye. Warren? Aye. Donahue? No. Heidemann? No. Jose? Aye. Lovendusky? Aye. Snyder? Aye. Steele? Nay. Custer? Nay. Wolf? Nay. Okay, motion passes. Okay, um, seeing there's nothing else on the agenda, uh, I don't know when the next meeting is until, one, oh, I'm sorry, Alderman Jose. Now that we got it at $2.50, we need to vote to recommend to the council that, that the... That's no, it's automatic. No, it's an automatic referral back to the council that it'll be on, it'll be on that resolution when you get your packet. Okay, all right, um, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Well, thank you very much, and thank you very much for coming. Thank you.